One of the best parts of life is the feeling of taking on a new adventure. And of course, with all those new adventures that were going on, there are a lot of photos for me to edit. And how I edit them changes every once in a while. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at my current process for editing my adventure photos. And we're gonna do it with a little bit of help from the sponsors of this video. ViewSonic and Monogram have teamed up to give you the opportunity to win some amazing prizes just by entering your photography in this year's Color Pro Awards. But before we get into that, let's take a look at what's inside these boxes. So this beautiful thing that I have right here is a brand new ViewSonic 2785 4K monitor, and it's gonna be so perfect for editing photos and videos. It covers 100% of the Adobe RGB color space and 96% of the DCI-P3 color space, and it's factory calibrated with incredible accuracy, so it looks great straight out of the box. That may have sounded complicated, but basically what it means is that this monitor has exactly what I need to make sure that the photo we edit today is wow. I can already tell you I love how slim it is and it uses USB-C so it's future-proof and it's great for Mac nerds like me. But what about the fancy orange box? This is the Monogram Creative Console Studio Bundle. It's a modular console system. It not only makes your workflow easier and faster, but it also feels like you're playing a video game while you're using it. You can connect all of their different button and dial modules however you want, and you can expand them later if you want as well. Monogram has worked with the teams over at Adobe, Final Cut Pro, and Capture One to give you some amazing templates for what you can do with this, but you can also customize it to whatever you want in any program you want. Did I mention that it feels like you're playing a video game and this one-of-a-kind Orbiter module is just so cool and so useful? Okay, so these are the sponsors of the video. That's the stuff I'm gonna be using today, but back to the contest. If you were paying attention earlier in the video, you might be able to guess that the theme of this year's Color Pro contest is new adventure. And if you're anything like me, this is perfect timing because you got a lot of new adventures going on in your life. There are some amazing prizes that you can win, like over $3,000 in cash, ViewSonic monitors, Monogram Creative Consoles, Shoot the Frame Premium memberships, Capture One licenses, and more. And it's not just one prize package either. There are three main prizes, and then there are bonus prizes for other people beyond that. You can submit your photo completely free of charge and interpret that theme of new adventure however you want. The contest runs from August 14th to September 15th, 2021. There's a link down in the description if you want to enter or if you just want more information. Seriously though, I encourage all of you to get involved with this. It's such an awesome contest, completely free to enter, and you can win some really amazing prizes. Now, I gotta get these things hooked up on my desk so that we can get to editing. All right, we're all set up and ready to go. We got the new monitor, we got the Monogram Creative Console. I actually added my old units that I had to this as well, so I've got this like double setup. I'm really looking forward to using that. And this is the photo that we're gonna be taking a look at today. This is from a hike that I did up Little Lahi just outside of Canmore, Alberta. I was just at the peak of my hike here having a little coffee with some Oreos. And so we're gonna take this from this, which is the original, to hopefully something similar to this. And I'm gonna show you how I got there. Okay, so what we're looking at here is Capture One, and I've done a little bit of customizing as far as my panels here on the right-hand side. So in general, I've customized my first panel to just kind of be like the things about the lens and the camera and anything that I might wanna take care of kind of before I get into my edit. Then on this first page here, I've got everything that has to do with kind of exposure and contrast. On the second page, I've got anything that has to do with color. And then this last page is just anything that I might want to copy from one image to another, which we won't need to do today. One of my favorite things about Capture One is the ability to use layers. So we can start adding layers right in here if we want. But before we get into any of the many layers that I've got planned for this, let's start off by just doing a little bit of a crop. So I've got something called Two Split, which is essentially a preset that I made that's built so that you can split it in two for doing like the seamless carousel posts on Instagram. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a crop here. 
nothing too crazy. And then right off the bat, we're going to change our white balance. It's a little, little warm right now. You can see in the clouds here, we got a lot of orange going on. And white balance is actually mapped to one of these orbiter modules. So I'm just gonna use that. I think that's looking pretty good. It does look a little bit cool overall, but I'd say that the clouds are cleaned up nice so we can add a little bit more warmth into everything else later on. We're gonna bump up the exposure a little bit here. We've got a pretty high contrast picture with the dark black stuff here and then the brights in the clouds. So I'm actually just gonna pull down the contrast a little bit, just something like that, really subtle. We'll do a lot more of that a little later on. I'm gonna bring up the brightness, which is essentially shifting our kind of everything in the middle without touching the whites and blacks. There we go, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna bring down my highlights, bring up my shadows, give me a little bit of clarity. Just kind of make it punch a little harder. I'm gonna use dehaze a whole bunch on this one. See, there's a lot of haze, especially as you get further into the background here. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this eyedropper tool and choose kind of what the haze color is. And then that helps it give a better dehaze. So you can see kind of before that, and then after that, it cleaned up the greens in our forests here. Now I'm gonna go over to my color tab here. And in my basic color editor, just gonna make my Red's a little bit more orangey and push up the saturation on those, something like that. Just gonna push the saturation on the oranges. This should start to even out a little bit of the fact that I made it pretty cool. It's just gonna kind of bring out the oranges and give you the illusion of it kind of warming up a little bit. I'm gonna make my yellows a little bit more orange, something like that. Bump the saturation on those guys too. These greens are looking a little too, well, green. So I'm gonna pull those over to the yellow side a little bit here. A little bit too blue, I guess, is more technical. I'm gonna make them really pop too. Mm, teals are looking pretty good. Blues, I'm gonna make more teal. And just pull them back a little bit because the blues are pretty intense again with the white balance being as cool as it is, I find that I have to make some slight adjustments to counteract that, but I also find that I like starting from a cooler image and then adding warmth into it. And I think I'll just leave these last two alone. Okay, so that's kind of like our base layer. That's our background layer. So if we look at before, and after, we've definitely got a lot more pop. We've got a lot more kind of evenness to it. We had a really contrasty image before and we've kind of brought back some of the information in the shadows and highlights. And we've got a nice kind of starting place for our colors as well. So next thing we're gonna do is make another layer and I'm going to call it grade. I'm going to fill the mask on that layer. So you can see this is the mask. So basically anything I do will be affecting the whole image. If you just make a new layer and you don't fill the mask, you'll be making all sorts of adjustments and nothing will be happening. What we're gonna do on this one in my color tab here, I'm going to go down to my color editor, or sorry, I'm gonna to go to my color balance. I'm gonna go over to my master color. So this is the, like an overall kind of thing. And like I said, I'm gonna bring a little bit of orange into the whole picture, something like that. And if we go into our three-way in the shadows, I'm gonna bring a bit of a like teal. In the mid-tones, I'm gonna bring a bit of that orange again to kind of counteract that. Quite a bit actually. And then in the highlights, again, this is up in the clouds and stuff. I want them to feel pretty clean blue. So I'm gonna put a little bit more blue and notice that this is a bit more of a blue than it is a teal. And that's really just kind of neutralizing those highlights more than anything. So that's before the grade and after the grade. Okay, we're gonna make another layer. And if I hold down on here, I can actually have a new filled layer. So now it pre-filled it for me like that. And I'm just hitting M to be able to see that mask there. We're gonna call this curves. I'm gonna go back over to my exposure tab. I'm gonna go down and find my curve. 
Under here, we've got some presets and we can choose a five point all channels. I'm gonna stay on my Luma. I don't want it to affect any of the colors, but I just wanna add a little bit of a contrast curve here. Nothing too crazy. And we can always come back and touch that up later on if we want. I think I maybe went a little too far with it. Just, just subtle. There, that's feeling pretty good. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a new filled adjustment layer. I'm gonna call this clean whites. Just for continuity here, I'm gonna capitalize it. And I'm gonna choose Luma range up here. And what this is gonna do is it's going to allow me to only choose a specific Luma range that I want to affect. So right now I just want to clean up the whites. So I'm gonna gradually bring this down Probably something like that. Those are kind of the spots that I don't really want there to be any color in those spots. I just want them to be nice, clean white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit apply on that. So now that's our mask for this layer. And I'm gonna go down to my exposure and I'm gonna bring my saturation down just a whole bunch. And it's pretty darn subtle, but if there is any kind of hidden color in those highlights that I'm not seeing necessarily, now it's gone. Then what we're gonna do is repeat that with the blacks. So Luma range again, and this time we're just gonna go on the other side of the spectrum. Gotta remember to fill the mask first. Okay, now Luma range. Let's try this again here. Display mask. There we go. So this is mostly, as you can tell, gonna be kind of my shirt and my hat. Something like that should do the trick. And then again, I'm just gonna take my saturation down a whole bunch. I find especially in the blacks, you can kind of clean up some color noise this way too, without digging in too hard with like noise reduction. All right, we're gonna do another filled adjustment layer and we're gonna call it levels. I'm gonna give it just like a hint of a fade here by pulling this up to three, and I'm just gonna shift the kind of middle section of everything just a little bit here. That's looking pretty good. And again, we can always come back and tweak these. I'm gonna call this layer focus. What we're gonna do is use a radial filter. So I'm gonna make kind of a big oval here. I'm gonna make it so that it's really feathered. So you can see, basically this is gonna affect everything except where I am and this river is. And it should give a focus to the subject of this photo, which is kind of this area here. Something like that. Again, I'm just hitting M to show me the parts that are gonna be affected. I'm gonna go back to my levels here and I'm gonna get a little bit more intense with what I was kind of doing in the last one there. I'm gonna push up the whites a little bit here. Just a little bit extra contrast. Pull down that brightness some more, which is basically what I was doing with the levels, but and then pull down the highlights a little bit. Just gives us a little bit more contrast in those clouds. I think that's looking pretty good. I might just push this out just a little bit more. All right, so next we're gonna add another adjustment layer. We're not gonna do a filled one this time. We're gonna call this foreground. Basically, we're just gonna affect this bottom section down here. And we're gonna use a gradient mask to do that. If you hold the option and drag back on either side of the gradient filter, you can make it a more intense slope from the middle to the edge here. So I'm gonna do that just a little bit. I think that should be okay. I'm gonna pull back the exposure. I really wanna kinda of take your eye away from this foreground area a little bit here. So exposure, a little more contrast. Bring down the brightness just a little bit. And then the highlights quite a bit here kind of just like dulled out that foreground. You're just not thinking about it so much anymore. Okay, next, what I kind of think of as the main focus of this, which is the river. We're gonna make another layer for that. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and paint it in. So I'm gonna put my mask visibility on. I'm just gonna start kind of painting. I'm not really too worried about being crazy accurate here. 
There we go. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go over to my color tab here. I'm gonna choose a color editor and I'm gonna go to skin tone. And this is one of my absolute favorite tools in Capture One. I'm gonna hit M to get rid of the uh, mask. I'm gonna choose this color picker and I'm going to pick a color somewhere in our water. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank up my hue here. I'm gonna crank up the saturation and I'm going to lighten it up quite a bit here too. So the cool thing about using the skin tone editor is that even though my mask isn't perfect, it's only affecting things that are falling within this range of colors. So it's not gonna touch my skin here because my skin isn't anywhere near those blue colors anyway. So even if it's painted on there, it's not doing anything. And then you can go and do things like the uniformity of the hue, saturation, and the luminance. So for example, we've got like a really dark area here and some kind of different areas, so I'm gonna crank up the uniformity of the lightness and then it kind of makes this little area pop a little bit more so before if you go too far with it it looks really flat so I'm only going to do it a little bit of the way and then let's go for a nice uniform hue that looks pretty good so before and after just really really pops it might be a little bit too bright I'm just going to pull down this lightness a little bit super saturated, super like pretty color. All right, let's add another layer and we're gonna call this sky. Now you can see up here that some of the blues in the sky here are looking pretty dark. It almost looks like I've got like a polarizer that's kind of messing with things a little bit. So we're gonna grab a gradient tool here. If you hold shift, it'll go in a straight line. I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna grab my eraser and just erase my head here so that it's not included. It's gonna tell me I have to rasterize it. That should be fine. And then we're gonna go do basically the same thing that we did with the water, but with some different adjustments going on. So we're gonna go back into our color editor, into skin tone, and then I'm going to pick kind of a lighter blue area. And if you wanna see just what it's selecting, you can click this view selected color range. And it'll show you all those colors in your picture. Now it shows you things outside of your mask. Like you can see that obviously the, the mountains and the water is also showing there, but because we've got a mask, it's only gonna affect things under the area that is currently, well now red. So what I really wanna do is bring up the lightness of all the blue. Okay, and now I'm gonna get into the uniformity. So I'm going to try and make it so that my sky is a more consistent color. Again, it kind of trying to take away from the like polarized look, a more uniform kind of saturation too. And then probably the most important one and the reason that I was here is for the uniform lightness. I might just pull the saturation down. I take it back. So before the sky and after. Okay, we're gonna create another layer. We're gonna make a filled layer here. This is something that I like to do that I find gives a nice uniformity to the photo. And again, it's using the skin tone tool. So I'm gonna go into my presets and I have something called unified orange. And basically all I'm doing is making all my oranges kind of more similar. And then I kind of tweak them from there, but you can see that it's not just oranges. It's all into the kind of pinks and reds. I'm gonna saturate them a little bit here so you can see like in the rocks and my skin are all getting a little bit more saturated. Maybe I'll darken them up a little bit. And then you can see here as part of my preset, it's kind of made all of them a little more uniform, a little bit closer to the orange because here's your main point. So it's pulling anything that's in the pink or purple or red area, it's pulling it over towards orange a little bit. And then it's adding uniformity to the lightness and the saturation a little bit as well. Just in case here, I'm going to grab my eraser with E and I'm just gonna paint out this shirt here. That should be good. Okay, so before my orange layer and after. You can see like if you look in this foreground area here and kind of on these rocks and then in the skin, it just kind of makes them pop just, just a little bit. And actually while we're speaking of the shirt, I'm gonna make a new layer and call it shirt. And I'm going to go ahead and paint in the shirt again. I'm just gonna go back into my exposure and I'm gonna bring down my shadows. You can still see a couple of the like wrinkles in the shirt, so it's still okay, but just kind of gives it back a little bit of that contrast that we had at the start. Makes the shirt look a little bit more black. 
Okay, this one's an easy one. Let's do a new filled layer. I'm just gonna call this color bump. And all I'm gonna do is go into my colors. I'm gonna go to the kind of master color thing and turn up the saturation a little bit. This is just literally adding saturation to the whole photo. So before that one and after. And then lastly, I'm gonna do one more layer here. I'm gonna call it skin. So my skin, I think, took on a little bit too much of that unified orange look. So I'm just gonna kind of loosely paint over the skin. I'm gonna just add a little bit of contrast here, and then I'm gonna go back into my skin tone adjustments, and I'm going to get kind of my main selection point where I think it should be, which is just like a little more pink than it actually is in the photo and a little bit brighter. I'm looking a little like yellow. There we go. I'm gonna pull back the saturation a little bit and then just even out the saturation, just a hair across all my skin. You can see I've got this like really white part here and then in the darker parts, it looks like it has a little bit more saturation. I think maybe I'll just bring up the lightness again here. So before, and after, you can see it kind of helped with the, the contrast between the hair and the skin a little bit. And that is our photo. So looking at before and after. So we've got before and we've got our background layer. We've got that grade where we added a little bit of orange, mostly into the midtones. We've got our curves where we add a little contrast, cleaned our whites and blacks, which is super subtle. We adjusted the levels a little bit. We added our focus. So this middle section here, which was pretty much just like a vignette. We've got our foreground. We made that kind of a little darker so it wouldn't catch your attention. We made the river pop. We made the sky a little bit brighter without affecting the clouds too much. We did my unified orange look and made the orange pop a little bit. I darkened up the shirt a little bit too an overall saturation bump. And then I kind of fixed my skin a little bit. And this is our final, oh, no, wait, there's one more thing. If I go back into uh, my color tab, I just want to add a little bit of film grain. I like this silver rich and I'm just, just gonna touch it just a little bit. So that is how I'm currently kind of editing my photos. Like you saw, I kind of do a really basic kind of foundational level on that background layer. And then I just start to do layers for kind of each thing that I want to touch up. Again, a huge thank you to ViewSonic and to Monogram for putting on the Color Pro Awards and for sponsoring this video. I highly recommend that you take some of your photos or go take some new photos with the new adventure theme in mind and enter them in that contest so you can win some cool stuff like ViewSonic monitors and these Monogram Creative Consoles, which are just so cool. If you have any questions about the process, make sure to leave a comment down below and on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future reviews and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.